Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Open 3 gem. This is a gem that allows you to run your background processes or programs while still having access to your STD in, STD out, and STD error. This also gives you a small little thread that you can wait for the execution to finish in the background. So why is something like this useful? Where could you possibly use it? Well, currently I'm using this in my uh, application over here, running on dnout.com to start and stop different servers for different games. So in this case, I have a vanilla with the boys server, which periodically checks how many players are online. It uh, can start and stop the container the server is actually running on and a bunch of other stuff. So as, uh, as things get up and running, uh, I need a lot of stuff to happen in the background and I need a way to capture the input and the output from like the Docker container. So if I do like a Docker container LS, you can see I have a whole bunch of different containers running here. Uh, but sometimes I need to like query the server to see like what's going on there. Uh, and I need to ensure the server's up and running, etc. So let's say for example, uh, right here, uh, the player count currently doesn't update on the server, but the uh, status here should probably update if I click stop server. Uh, so you'll see this server stops, the status then updates, and the console down here spins down so you can't see it anymore. So that's all happening because of the open three gem running this in the background. Now, in, in theory, I could just, you know, manually do this. I don't necessarily need to have the open three gem running this stuff, but it's just very useful to have this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have the open three gem just run a small little Python script to update our posts in the background. And I'll show you sort of how, how I use this. I don't necessarily know if this is the right way to use it, but this is how I've been using it the last couple days to get started. I'm going to go ahead and do a rails new video. Uh, oops, and I don't have my Ruby set 3.2.3, I think. And now I can do a Rails new video. Okay, so that takes care of that. I should probably source my ZSH to get that to update with the changes I just made, but that's okay. We don't we don't have to do things perfectly here, right? Uh, but okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna, going to create our post scaffold. We're then going to create our quick little model, and then we're going to do uh, a quick little job. So. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and open this up in VS Code, just so we have this over to the side. Uh, make sure that's over here. There we go. Uh, and before I get started, real quick, if you're curious on the extensions I'm using, most of them are over here. I get these comments quite often, so just take a look through this list and you know make sure you have the ones that I'm using. There you go. Okay. I'll have a better way to do that in future videos. I just wanted to cover that real quick because every so often people ask. So to get started, let's go ahead and let's do a bundle add open three to add that gem real quick. There's no other setup required. Super easy stuff. Next, let's create our scaffold. So we'll say Rails G scaffold post. I'll give each post a title and a body of type text and I'll also give it a random, uh, what did I call it? Random number of type integer like that. Go ahead and run that. And now we can do a Rails DB colon migrate to migrate our database. Cool. So that's our basic setup. Now, what I want to do is come into our app, our views and our posts and our form. In here, we have the random number. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that because I don't want the user to be able to set the random number when the server starts. So if we come over here to our post page in localhost port 3000 and I go to the actual post page, we click new post, we can do a test in a case. And you can see the random number isn't set. Additionally, if we come into our controllers and our post controller and scroll down to the bottom, we can get rid of this random number. That way we don't even have a parameter for it. Cool. Okay, next up, let's generate a background job to update this number. So to do that, we're gonna do a Rails G job. We're gonna call this random post number, just like that. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and run a Rails S again to start our server. So let's go ahead and let's pop into our post controller. Ideally in our post controller, we want to fire off this update uh, and get random number thing from somewhere. So in this case, I'm going to do it from the, uh, I can do it from the post show page or I can do it from the index page. It really doesn't matter. We're going to do it right here in the show page, right? If you do it in the index page, you're going to have to do it for all posts, just so you're aware. Uh, but in this case, we're only going to do it on the show page. So if I come to the show page, it'll fire off this job, right? Uh, the issue here is this job currently doesn't do anything. So let's come into our jobs, random post job. Okay. So first things first in our post controller right here, we do random post job. We call it by the class name dot perform later, which just tells it to run in the background. And then we pass in at post. So clearly this is accepted. This is expecting a post. So let's make sure we do that first. Just as a note, if you're using sidekick, you're gonna have to pass in the post ID. So you're going to do post dot I oops, post dot ID. You're also going to do perform async 
and then you're going to have to do a post uh, or post equals post dot find by ID ID. And then you're going to have to like return unless post or something, something like that if you're using sidekick. But in this case, we're just using regular active job stuff. So we'll just say pass in a post, right? And then over here, we are going to perform later and just pass in the post. Okay. Next step in our random post job, we want to uh, do something. So we want to use the open three stuff, right? Now, the way that open three works is if we come over here, they give you access to a couple different options and there's some ways to set it up, but you'll see the docs here are pretty empty. It's kind of up to you to figure out how to use this. That's okay though. That's what I'm here for. So to actually use this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to opt to create a new folder. I'm going to call this services because we're creating a services folder. We're going to go ahead and stop our server because it's going to need to like load from this in this folder in a minute here. I'm going to right click in the services folder and I'm just going to call this the command runner service.rb. In the command runner service.rb, we need to give this a class which is going to match the current class just like that. Now, I don't want to instantiate this, so I'm going to use the include singleton. That just means that I don't have to do like, you know, command runner service.new, which means my initializer can be empty or my constructor can be empty. Then I'm going to create a single method in here and I'm going to call this execute. This method is going to take in a command. It's going to run this in the background using open three uh, and then whatever happens, happens. So what do I want this to actually do? Well, I want this to do a open three dot p open three. And if we come back over here, we can take a look at what p open three does. p open three pipes for std in, std out and std error. So this will give you access to all three types of inputs and outputs, right? Pretty cool. Okay. so. We do this, we pass in the command, and then we do a uh, do block with a std in, std out, std error, and then we have our wait thread, which is our child thread that we can wait until it finishes. And we can come down here and I think we can do another end, and that should be good. Okay, so first things first, let's get the exit status from that wait thread. So we can say exit status equals wait thread dot value. So that'll tell us, you know, did this work or not? So we say rails.logger.debug, command execution status, and then we have our exit status, right? Now we can do a quick little check. Did this execute successfully? Maybe, and in that case, maybe we wanna do something and just log out that, you know, this worked. Then maybe we want to grab the result, oops, grab the result from the stdout.read, and then we can just return the result, right? Like that. Okay, so this is one option. We'll get back to this, why this isn't totally perfect in a second. So we come back to our random post job, right? In our random post job, we need to pass in some command for this to run. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the lib and I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this, uh, what did I say? Like random number.py. I'm just going to create a quick little Python script that's going to generate a random number showing you that you can in fact uh, use like a random Python script in the background, right? Okay. So we're going to do this the wrong way first, I think is the best way to show you. So we're going to do a random int and then below that, we're just going to print the random int. Okay. So you come in here, you grab a random integer and then you just print it because we're reading the STD uh, out. We are going to uh, see this in the console when it's printed out. And then this will just, the uh, sorry, the service will just see it and then it'll just read it. Okay. Simple enough. So let's come over here and let's do a Rails C real quick. We can do a Rails C. We can come over to our job, which is the random post number job. And we can say uh, post equals post dot create. We're going to give this a, or actually, do we have any posts? Post dot first post. We do have a post. So we'll just use the post that already exists. So now we can say post, right? So we're going to pass in this post to our job. So we're going to say random post job dot perform now post. Uh, and you can see here the uh, arguments here are upset for whatever reason. Uh, so maybe we should switch this to perform later. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So that performs later. And then you can see here, uh, this executes the random post job is, is run. Uh, and then you get a, uh, a bunch of garbled nonsense from the background. So this is kind of annoying to test, but if we come over to the command runner service, which I'll just stop real quick, we can do command runner service dot instance dot execute and we can pass in a command. So if we come back into our job here, uh, this is where we would ideally have our, uh, our, our logic for running this, but you'll just have to trust me on this uh, being the correct way to run this. So in terms of uh, what we're executing here, we're going to execute a Python, in my case, Python 3, 
And this is going to go to the, uh, I guess, what is it? Like lib slash uh, random number.py, I guess. So this runs here, command execution successful. It comes back with 64 because the random number generator generated a number between 64. But you can see it has this, this little new line in it, right? Okay, so if we have this 64 right here, we're just gonna say this is the result equals whatever the string was. We can then say result dot two i is gonna be 64. Okay, so all we have to do is run the command runner service. We get back a result. We cast two i on it. That gives us a number. And then we can do uh, post dot update random number is going to be result dot two i is this is basically our blueprint. What we're building right now is our blueprint for how we want this to work so that we can then come over here and just make this work. So first things first, in our random post job, we're gonna say we want to run the, uh, the command, sorry, the command that we wanna run is gonna be the uh, one that goes to Python three. And then we wanna make sure that we're actually doing this properly. So we're gonna do a rails.root. And I'm actually thinking now I'm gonna extract this. So I'm gonna say the target dir is equal to rails.root.join lib and then it's going to be python and what was it python uh random number sorry random underscore number dot pi so this is now our target directory so we want to run python 3 on our target directory this is going to be our command we can then do a result because remember we did our result right here reset it and then we use 2i so our result is going to be command runner service dot instance because we're using the singleton we just have to call the class name dot instance to get the single instance of it. And then we can execute the command. And once that's done, we can do a post dot update with the random number result dot two I. Uh, and then optionally, you can either have the exclamation mark here or not. It doesn't really matter, whatever you want to do. So if we now do a Rails S, uh, first of all, if we come over here, you'll see that this is now 64. Uh, and now right here, we can see this was set to 75. So if we refresh, it goes to 75, but it's always gonna be one number behind because it generates the new number as the page is loaded. So we come into our post controller. You can see we run this, but then we go to the show page and this runs in the background. So this will never finish before the page itself loads, which means it'll always be one number behind. But now I wanna talk about what could go wrong here. So let's say instead of doing a random int, we do something like, uh, I don't know, exit, or we can even just say random int equals to help I've fallen, right? Just something like this. Now, if we refresh, we'll see over here that uh, it continues to parse, but now it's just going to exit with a zero uh, and that's not what we want. So we can do something like exit with a, a error of one or something, right? And we can refresh. And then what happens here? Well, we start to run into some issues. So we come over to our post, uh, sorry, our command runner service here. And instead of just doing any exit uh, status success, what we can do is we can say else there was an error here, right? If there was an error here, we want to uh, maybe log that error. So we're gonna grab the Rails logger error. We just hide this side here. We can then set the result to be, I don't know, something that is meaningful to us. We'll set it to negative one because we know it can never generate a negative one status. And then if we refresh, you'll start to see negative one appears here because we ran into a non-success state, right? Like this didn't work for us. But now what happens if we try to, let's say uh, in our random post job, run random number uh, two dot pi, right? And we come over here and we refresh. And then we probably run into some errors here somewhere, hopefully. Uh, and it should tell us that uh, this this just straight up didn't work. So now it's not going to be a negative one. Now we're running into uh, you know some other issues. So what we can do in this case, I don't even know if this will fire off the proper error, but uh, we need to ensure that our uh, execute here has a bunch of good logic in it so that we never run into this issue. So what we can do is we can say rescue, uh, and then we might have some errors here. Let's say uh, stare at standard error. And then we can do a rails.logger.error. And then we can do command execution failed with this error. And then we can just, uh, I don't know, return negative one again, or maybe return negative two. I don't know, something like that. So this isn't going to fire here because this uh, command is still somewhat valid. Uh, so what we probably want to do is come over to here. And instead of doing this, we do like Python two 
uh, or we can even just say Pyth is what we're trying to run. Uh, and now you'll see the switch is over to negative two because now it's trying to run an invalid command in our shell. So this, I guess, is the best example. So if your uh, Python script runs okay, but it's like returning you know garbled nonsense, you get a negative one. Uh, if your Python script like can't execute because you're using you don't have Python installed, then you get a negative two back. Uh, and then you can also do some other logic here, like maybe you switch this so it only returns a, a even number or something. But all of this you'll see is happening in the background. And why this is really nice is because we can come over to, let's say, our models and our uh, post.rb. And then in our post.rb, we can do something like, let me grab it from here, a after commit. So now we're going to move over to using turbo. And then we can say after we have uh, changed something, let's do a broadcast replace to. And then we're going to stream this to the postable channel, which we have to go create a target of post ID. That's just inherently in the uh, post partial. We're going to do the post partial and then we're going to pass in the locals of self. So let's take a look in our post show page. In our post show page, what we want to do is at the top, just do a turbo stream from the postable. So if we come over here and now if we refresh, uh, and actually let me come back over to our command runner service, or sorry, our random post number, and I'm gonna switch this back to running Python 3, and it's gonna run the proper library, and then the proper library is gonna go back to uh, doing this. It's gonna do random number through uh, zero or 100, like that. So now if we refresh a couple times, we should start to see this uh, trying to broadcast, but it's gonna to fail to broadcast here uh, because it's still gonna be one behind. So you can see here, this is two. It does do the broadcast, but the number's still one behind. Why is that? Well, observe, if I import time and then I do a time.sleep for three seconds and then I refresh, you're gonna see it goes to 75 first then the Python script finishes eventually, and then the broadcast happens. So the reason why we weren't seeing it is actually because the broadcast without this sleep fires before the Rails app says, I'm transmitting from the subscription and I'm streaming from Postable. So with this sleep, it now fires after this, it waits three seconds, then it fires, and then all of this stuff happens. And you can see all of this happens in the background without the user really being bothered by it. And yes, we could in theory be doing all of this through the job itself, uh, but to me, this is a lot cleaner because now all we're really doing is we're relying on one service to execute all of this. And it really doesn't matter what you're doing here. In this case, this service is just executing a quick little Python script. In another case, in this case, what it's doing, if I come over to, let's say the container service, you can see here the way that I start and stop all of my uh, containers is by passing a docker compose command to the command runner service. This command runner service is actually the exact same thing, if this would open, uh, as the one we just created. It's just constructed a little bit differently and it needs to check for a EO or ENT -E error uh, to know that the command didn't succeed. But the rest of this is essentially the same thing it does have some duplicated code here but your ups and your downs and your restarts kind of change and some of this other logic is prone to changing as well uh, but overall you're just running all of this through the command runner service which is just running through open and all of this is running through a uh, a sidekick job that does the container starting so in the container starter job we're performing that and we're just saying uh, run the container start so again pretty much all of this is done in the background, which allows us to have something like the demo over here where you can start and stop an entire container if you want to. And all of that happens in the background. Ignore the turbo stream that's duplicating right there. Pretend I know what I'm doing. And then you can see here, all this is also happening in the background. And all of this is being powered by one little P open command, basically, that kind of handles everything. So hopefully this is like a in-depth enough uh, demo to give you an idea of how this could be used somewhere. Uh, I tried to, you know, really stress uh, <laughs> what we could do with this. I realize the random number is a bit contrived, uh, but hopefully this is still something that you're interested in. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.